Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This afternoon, we have an opportunity to examine the most interesting patient, and uh, we'll ask uh, Marvin Sonny if he will tell us a little bit about uh, his uh, dental patient. Dan presented in the oral diagnosis clinic and was referred to the periodontal department as a gingivitis patient. And during my examination, the obvious jaundice of the eyes was extremely visible. I inquired further into Dan's history whether there was any liver disorder of any sort, and it turned out that Dan has a blood disorder entitled spherocytosis, which involves a hemolytic anemia, thereby producing the jaundice. Let's just take a look, uh, if we may. Dan, would you put your head right back in the headrest here? And uh, perhaps you look over toward me. That's good. And we'll come right on into the sclera of the eyes. The sclera of the eyes is a very uh, good spot to uh, look, to examine for jaundice, because, of course, the color uh, displays the uh, yellow uh, beautifully. And uh, perhaps you can see it here now. Let's look straight ahead. Uh, no, that's good. OK, now look to the other side. OK. Let me just open the eye just as a little speck. Look over toward me a little bit now. That's it. Very good. Come right on in there. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's just look in the mouth first, and then then Dan will ask you a few questions if we may. We'll put this large mirror in, and then we can look right up at the palate. able to come right on in on this. Very good. Okay, fine. Is there anything that uh, you'd like to point out in the oral cavity that we should observe? Well, Dan did present only with you know gingivitis type condition, and there was nothing unusual in terms of the of the gingiva. It was relatively normal, other than the marginal gingivitis. All right. You know, when when first you called me to come over and uh, talk with uh, you and Dan, I was impressed with the pallor of the palate, particularly, and the uh, buccal mucosa, which uh, uh, we do see in anemia. Now, uh, today uh, he uh, looks uh, just fine. Actually, his condition is rather minimal, as we've talked about, uh, so that he doesn't uh, display many of the features that these patients do present. So I think maybe let's go to the x-rays and we'll uh, take a look at them and see what we see. One of the uh, things we look for in the x-rays are uh, the widening of the trabecular spaces and uh, a greater distance between cortical plates, because in this uh, situation, uh, the usual fatty marrow is converted to hematopoietic marrow, that is, marrow that is capable of making red blood cells. And of course, since uh, the marrow is a very busy bone-making factory, it sometimes expands at the expense of the trabeculae. So you'll see an absence of trabeculae, a widening between them, and sometimes peculiar trabeculation. Marvin, do you want to point out some of the features that you can see in this patient? Well, in between the lower left cuspid and bicuspid, one can see a decrease of trabeculation, it's pointed out right here, and also between the cuspid and lower left lateral. This x-ray here might show it a little bit better. The trabeculation seems to stop and there seems to be almost a diffuse pattern to the bone. Under the retained deciduous primary tooth, the adjacent to the mental foramen, there almost appears to be a lack of trabeculation. One would expect a widening of the marrow spaces in the bone because of the spherocytosis, because the destruction of the red blood cells, one needs more red blood cells daily, and therefore these widening of these spaces readily evident in the lower anterior and bicuspid region. Well, the intraoral films give us uh, an opportunity to see that something is abnormal. Uh, the skull films are much more helpful. 
because here we can examine uh, or seek for evidence of an increase in the bone marrow hematopoietic capacity. That is, the distance between the inner and the outer cortical plates are uh, widened as opposed to the normal patient. And first we'll look at uh, Dan's uh, skull film here to display the increase in uh, width and then contrast it with the normal patient, uh, uh, Mr. Sonny himself here. And uh, Martin, do you want to tell us some of the differences that you notice? Well, a large difference was the obvious decrease in space between the outer and inner cortical aspects of the skull. In this x-ray, approximately two to three millimeters. In the x-ray of the patient, more around six millimeters at the greatest aspect. Another important aspect seems to be the lack of clarity of the outer cortical plate all the way from the frontal sinus throughout the entire aspect of the skull as compared to the inner cortical aspect, which is clearly evident throughout the entire x-ray. Dan, you've described yourself as uh, being interested in sports. Let me ask you a few questions. Do you notice any problems of uh, oxygen embarrassment uh, following strenuous activity? Do you pant a lot and things like that? Uh, I do, but I think that's only normal for me anyway. I, I'm not in the best of condition right now. <laughs> so you feel you can run upstairs, for example, and oh, yeah. uh, not be terribly winded at the top oh, or yeah. anything like that? Very good. Uh, Marvin, how about, uh, would you like to describe any problems you think uh, the practitioner might have uh, if he had a, pa a patient uh, such as Dan in his practice? I think the most critical problem would be involved with extraction since no other dental treatment would be contraindicated. Extractions would have to be watched closely since a crisis in Dan's condition brings about a decrease in the white blood cells and in that respect would not be able to have proper healing as well the red blood cells would obviously be lost to quite a great extent and that would bring about a poorer response to healing as well so other than extractions there really isn't any anything in dental treatment that would be of significance from your reading uh, did you uh, come across anything about this particular problem uh, what do you want to tell us about it i think the significant problem significant thing i found in the reading was that the treatment of this disease is relatively simple in that it's splenectomy. Removal of the spleen causes the problem of serocytosis to decrease. It Why no is longer that? occurs. The problem involved in Dan's case is, is more than just the spherical shape of the red blood cells. It has to do with a loss of energy in the red blood cell membrane, which during its stay in the spleen for a long period of time causes a weakening of this red blood cell and thereby causing its destruction within the spleen. And there's simply the removal of the spleen brings about cessation of this problem. And Dan would be able to live a, real, a normal life to full existence without his spleen. And that would be the, the end of his problem. Very fine. Dan, I want to thank you very much for coming over and sharing uh, your experiences with us. I was glad to come. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.